Merry Christmas, and welcome to St. John's Episcopal Church in Gig Harbor, Washington. We are delighted to worship with you this evening. Let us prepare our hearts for worship. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Son of God, light that shines in the dark, child of joy and peace, help us to come to you and be born anew this holy night. Shepherds, God, and angels sing. Christ, 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, you have caused this holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that we, who have known the mystery of that light on earth, may also enjoy him perfectly in heaven, where with you and the Holy Spirit he lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the letter of Paul to Titus. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity, and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Yeah. 
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He was registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And when she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, They made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Part of the difficulty that we've all faced this year because of the pandemic is the way that it's disrupted our Christmas traditions. It's gotten in the way of us doing what we always do, and after months of pandemic, this reduction of Christmas has felt especially awful, and I think that's reasonable because traditions are necessary. I'm no anthropologist, but I think what traditions do is tie together the whole arc of our lives They connect our present circumstances to our earliest memory or whenever the traditions began. When I hang the little Norwegian elf wall hanging up in my house now, I'm seeing it hung in the hallway of my childhood home. So the whole span of my life gets somehow gathered together in that one little gesture and that little strip of linen. And not only do traditions pull my story together, it links me to my larger identity within my family and community and culture. When I make stuffing for the turkey, it's my grandpa's stuffing recipe that I use, 
And now my kids, who have never known their great-grandfather, celebrate the tastiness of his stuffing and become part of his legacy. And I cannot tell you how satisfying it is for my soul when they eat that stuffing and exclaim how delicious it is. In that moment, it's as if I'm holding hands with my children and my grandfather, and we are one. Here in St. John's, the angels we hang every year from our rafters in the nave are the angels that Del Hansen made. And years down the road, when Del's no longer with us, his angels will be here with us still. So all these things matter, these traditions that secure our place in our families, in our church, in our humanity. But there's also a downside to all this. Our Christmas traditions can also do us a disservice in that the value of Christmas becomes restricted to our traditions and we lose our connection with the wonder of what birthed this holiday in the first place. In his book, The Hour of the Unexpected, John Shea shares the memory of listening to a little girl as she narrated her version of the Christmas story. She was five, John writes, sure of the facts, and recited them with slow solemnity, convinced every word was revelation. She said, they were so poor, they had only peanut butter and jelly sandwiches to eat, and they went a long way from home without getting lost. The lady rode a donkey, the man walked, and the, and the baby was inside the lady. They had to stay in a stable with an ox and an ass, <laughs> but the three rich men found them because a star lighted the roof. Shepherds came, and you could pet the sheep but not feed them. Then the baby was born, and do you know who he was? Her quarter eyes inflated to silver dollars. The baby was God. And she jumped in the air, whirled around, dove into the sofa, and buried her head under the cushion, which is, he said, the only proper response to the good news of the incarnation. That really is the only proper response, but it is, unfortunately, the response we grown-ups no longer have the capacity to share. In fact, we may no longer even miss it. We've become too old, you and I, to go diving into cushions at the wonder of it all. It's too difficult now for pictures and tableaus of stables and mangers to be anything more than comfortable, picturesque traditions. So if, if it's wonder we're after, wonder at the marvel of the incarnation, we will need new images and fresh symbols that still have the power to shock and amaze us and make us gasp at the absurd marvel that God in Christ joined us as one of us in this world. And so I offer this night another story, an incarnation story that isn't at all picturesque, and it even uses some soft, dirty words. It's from the book Franny and Zoe, a relatively unknown story by J.D. Salinger. In this story, Franny's friend was going to be appearing before a studio audience, and he tells him to make sure he shined his shoes before he arrived. I was furious, he writes, says, the studio audience were all morons, and the announcer was a moron, and the sponsors were morons, and I just damn well wasn't going to shine my shoes for them. I said they couldn't see them anyway where we sat. Well, he said to shine them anyway. He said to shine them for the fat lady. I didn't know what the hell he was talking about, but I shined my shoes for the fat lady every time I went on air again. And then later in the story, the friend says, I'll tell you a terrible secret. Are you listening to me? There isn't anyone out there who is the fat lady. There isn't anyone anywhere that isn't the fat lady. Don't you know that? Don't you know that secret yet? And don't you know, listen to me now, don't you know who the fat lady really is? Ah, oh, buddy. Ah, oh, buddy. It's Christ himself. Christ himself, buddy. As much as we're attracted to the picturesque and peaceful image of the holy family and the stable with their perfectly positioned companions, and there's value in that, don't get me wrong, 
that isn't the memory that Jesus told us to hold on to if we're trying to find him in this life. In Jesus' words, we would find him in the prisoner and the unclothed, in the hungry and the thirsty, or as J.D. Salinger put it, in the fat lady. And please hear me, I'm not shaming anyone who struggles with weight, but this language from Salinger is helpful because of course in our society, obesity is frowned on, as are all manner of special needs, as are all manner of things that render someone less than. And Jesus comes along and says, if you want me, if you want God, I am the fat lady. I am the boy with ADD. I am the brother-in-law you laugh at when he's not around. And listen, because this is the essential mystery. We're not talking about charity here. We're not talking about being a good person who gives money to the poor. Because that perception still keeps us good people at the top, dishing down our scraps to those at the bottom. And what Jesus is teaching us again and again is that we've got to flip this worldview on its head. This is the stunning bit. This is the twirl around and dive into the cushions bit. The incarnation is not just a memory. It's still happening all around us if we have eyes to see. Jesus is with us now quite literally in one another and most especially in those we deem the lowest. The marvel of it all is that when God became human, he did it in the most humble way. We keep trying to elevate that humility into something quite exalted and lovely, our Christmas traditions. And in so doing, we've lost the substance of what the incarnation was and what it still is. We keep looking for the incarnate God to come to us as a comforting authority figure, the omnipotent parent, an obviously trustworthy person God who will take care of everything. But that's not how it happened. God came to us as a poor baby, and now he sends us the fat lady. I say these things to you as one who still needs to believe it. How easy it is for me to be Father Eric, the kind pastor, the one with the right answers, the dispenser of gas cards and food cards to people in need. How hard it is for me to visit the deathbed of a parishioner, to meet someone who needs financial assistance, to sit with a child in the atrium, and to recognize and believe that I am in the presence of Christ, that it is my rabbi standing before me, my priest extending me grace. But in those moments when I do, when this world flips on its head and I'm on the bottom as it were, and there at the top, it all becomes alive again, alive and wonderful. Who wants to be on top after all? Our souls know what a fraud that is. We don't belong there. Our souls want to be in their rightful place at the feet of Jesus, to be able to look up without needing to be in control or impressive, and to see our impressive God before us. Our traditions have been reduced and restricted this year, and it feels rotten, okay. But our God, the incarnate Christ is in our midst all around us. If we can but climb down from our stools and take our seat on the stable floor and wait to find him in unexpected faces. Merry Christmas. Just see.
Now let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Friends, let us pray together this night through the Father's love begotten in Christ and in each of us. Of the Father's love begotten, ere the world's begun to be, he is and omega, he the source, the ending here of the things that are that have been, and at future years shall see evermore and evermore. Evermore shall you be worshipped, for in the Christ child you are revealed and your nature known. You are our God of holiness and deep kindness, making your home within your church and throughout creation that all might be dignified by you. Oh, that birth forever blessed, when the virgin full of grace by the Holy Ghost conceiving for the Savior of a race and the babe the world's redeemer First revealed his sacred face, evermore and evermore. We pray for the diversity of humankind, all races and cultures and people, both those who are living and those who have died. Reveal your likeness in every person and heal each wound by your grace. Let the heights of heaven adore him. Angel hosts his praises sing. Pause dominions bow before him. And extol our God and King. Let no tongue on earth be silent. Every voice in concert ring, evermore and evermore. We pray for all powers and dominions, that governments and leaders and all those with authority would perceive your glory, then join with you in blessing and healing this world. Christ to thee with God the Father, and O Holy Ghost to thee, him a chant and high thanksgiving, and unwearied praise as be, on a glory and dominion, and eternal victory, evermore Amen. and evermore. 
peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with you. Peace. Peace. St. John's, thank you at this time of Christmas when gifts are given and received for all the gifts that you have given to this congregation and all the gifts you give to the world around you. Thank you especially for supporting our mission partners and thank you for being generous hearts during this time of pandemic. May all of your gifts, those given here and abroad, be a source of transformation and light and life to the world. Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings and come into his courts. be with you and also with you lift up your hearts we lift them to the Lord let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is right to give God thanks and praise It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because you gave Jesus Christ your only Son to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, 
who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh. Jesus, your son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, St. John our patron, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son to take our nature upon him, bless you in this holy season, scatter the darkness of sin, and brighten your heart with the light of his holiness. Amen. May God, who sent his angels to proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. Amen. May God, who in the word made flesh, joined heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you his peace and favor. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.